practice this weekend. Nowhere are expectations higher than on the plains of Auburn, Alabama. The Tiger football team has a glorious history. One national title, five SEC crowns, Heisman winners Pat Sullivan, and the incomparable Bo Jackson. After struggling in the late 90s, Tommy Tuberville came and steadied the Tigers and has this team poised on the precipice of greatness. USC's storied past produced four national titles and four Heisman winners in less than 20 years. Last season, Pete Carroll and departed Heisman winning quarterback Carson Palmer lifted the Trojans out of a decade-long malaise. Now the Trojan renaissance appears complete and they remain legitimate national title contenders. SEC on CBS moments ago the Tiger walk. It allows the faithful of Auburn University one last chance to urge the players on. The men of Troy will not march into the fray unescorted. Members of the band are here as well as members of the student body. And a flyby three of the pilots of the four Harrier Jets, graduates of Auburn University. It's the Home Depot SEC on CBS, a couple of top-ranked teams, the Trojans of USC against the Tigers of Auburn. Good afternoon, everybody. Vern Lundquist along with Todd Blackledge and Jill Arrington. We welcome you to our first game of the season. On a normal afternoon in the fall in Auburn, Alabama, this place becomes one of the truly special pieces of real estate in the national sports landscape. It becomes an ocean of orange, and the 90,000 fans who are here make this a vibrant and pulsating experience. That's on a normal afternoon. Today is abnormal, made so because of the presence of the men of Troy, the University of Southern California football team, making its first visit ever to the Auburn campus. And they come off a wonderful 11-2 season, a top 10 ranking this year. The Tigers, 9-4 a year ago, rated number one by a couple of organizations, all of which makes for a compelling national season opener. <laughs> I'm pumped. Yeah, <laughs> and it's going to be you exciting. Are. You know, let's start with what we know about these teams. At the end of last year, these two teams were playing as well as anybody in college football. A lot of the key players from last year's teams are going to be on the field today. But what we don't know about these teams, we don't know about their chemistry. Every team develops a new personality. That gets forged in the month of August. We'll know a lot more about these teams in three hours than we do right now. Well, let's talk specifics, Todd. Whom do you expect to uh, stand out today for either team? Well, let's start with Auburn. They love to run the football. For them to have success today, that's got to be part of their formula. And they've got to have big games from a pair of junior tailbacks who are outstanding players. Carnell Williams and Ronnie Brown combined for nearly 1,800 yards last year. Now, Carnell, he's got a little more flash, a little more dash, but a difficult guy to tackle for one guy. Then you can go to Ronnie Brown, who came in and played marvelously when Carnell was hurt. He's about 20 pounds heavier, a little bigger, maybe a little better straight ahead speed. The beauty for Auburn is they're both healthy now, and they can rotate them, and they can have them both fresh in the fourth quarter. That's bad news for any defense. Now, what about Southern California? we got to start with a quarterback. They've got a new quarterback and sophomore, Matt Leiner, and I like what Pete Carroll has told him. He said, hey, Matt, don't think about replacing Carson Palmer, the Heisman Trophy winner. You're succeeding him. He won the job in the summer, clearly, by being a great decision maker and managing the football team. He's got to keep his poise here in Auburn today and find a way to get the ball in the hands of his dynamite playmakers on the outside. Two wide receivers, senior Kerry Colbert and sophomore Mike Williams. For USC to have a chance to win, these two guys have to have big games. And the beauty of having two great wide receivers receivers a defense can scheme to take away one very difficult to take away two cbs sports coverage of the home depot sec on cbs will continue after this message and a word from your local station the home depot sec on cbs is sponsored by the home depot singular wireless miller highlight and by Sonic. That was 
a year ago. This afternoon, the Auburn Tigers first on the field. And right behind them, making their first visit ever to Auburn, Alabama. The Trojans of Southern California. USC 11-2, winners in the Orange Bowl a year ago. Auburn 9-4, ranked number six in the country. The kickoff coming next. USC won the toss. They have deferred the option until the second half. That means Auburn will receive to open the 2003 season. Tommy Tuberville, the head coach of the Auburn Tigers. Pete Carroll, the head coach of the USC Trojans. It is a typically muggy late August afternoon. Temperature of 88 degrees. The humidity at 70%. The forecast for the remainder of the afternoon, partly cloudy. And so much of the conversation, Todd, has involved USC's ability to handle the heat and humidity here. Yeah, and the first half will be much more critical than the second half. It'll cool down here as we get into the second half of this football game, but first half will be very important. Ryan Killeen will kick off. You saw the stats a year ago. This is Carnell Cadillac Williams. He is joined back deep by number 22, Trey Smith. Williams off of a broken fibula suffered mid-season a year ago. Gun. Trey Smith at the two. Hands right, cut down as he reaches the 19-yard line, might have gotten to the 20. And let's check in with the third member of our commentary team. Here's Jill Arrington. Well, with USC coming into unfamiliar territory. He set up his team during practice with noise and all kinds of music to assimilate what they knew would be a loud crowd down here in the deep south and they are loud but one thing you can prepare for is the humidity and it's hot out here but they do have on the sidelines a cool cake to close to cool down the players if they get overheated to get them back on the field but Todd it might come down to who has the deepest bench to last in this heat through the fourth quarter here's a handoff to Cadillac Williams heading left and negative yardage on the first play yeah just to follow up on that point that Jill made I mean the first quarter I think we'll see more substitution particularly in the offense and defensive lines by both teams because it will cool down as we get further into the football game Jason Campbell this by the way he's been a starter off and on for two years this is the first season opener mm -hmm. he's ever started he uh, came on and won five led the uh, Tigers to five of six in the end of the season a year ago here's Campbell takes the draw rolls right being chased lets it go on the fly incomplete Anthony Mix well we talked about the cool cape and yeah, we've seen a lot of different devices you know this one I've never seen this one you actually put the cape on and air condition everything at once you know you see the cool zones and the fans but that's a little different deal well Jill if that thing starts working send a couple up here <laughs> third and 12 at the 18 and this is not the situation Auburn hopes to be in in a consistent way in this football game this is not their strength three wide outs two to the right Campbell straight drop back gets protection now has to scamper to his right in and out intercepted Picked off by the freshman Darnell Bing. Number 20 makes the first big play of his career. 
The ball tipped and Darnell Bing with the pick. Well, again, third and 12 is not the situation that Auburn wants to be in. It is a run-oriented football team. And watch the pressure that USC is going to get with their front four. They just rush four, and they force Campbell out of the pocket. And then this is dangerous, throwing back across his body, and the ball was actually tipped by Kevin Arbett. And then Bing comes up with the interception. Matt Leinert starting his first game. He's a redshirt sophomore. Hands it off. Left side. Matt Leinert, sophomore, last year, the totality of his playing experience behind Carson Palmer. He had two snaps against Colorado. He had three series against Oregon and one snap against UCLA. <laughs> but he won the job, clearly, in a very stiff competition. He won it by making good decisions, and Pete Carroll could not be happier to put him in a, this situation, this kind of field position right away. Second down and nine. Leinert, the lefty to throw for the first time in his career. It's incomplete. Kerry Colbert got knocked sideways by Carlos Rogers. That's going to be pass interference. Well, this is going to be a battle all day for the Auburn defense. If there is a weak link or a chink in the defensive armor of Auburn, it might be their secondary. Carlos Rogers is the best cover guy. The other corner is Junior Rosegreens, who was a safety last Best year. interference on the defense, 15-yard penalty, first down. Colbert and Mike Williams are outstanding. And there's the hold right there as he tried to run into the slant. Rodgers was in good position, but he can't wrap the arms around him. And a, and a gift for the USC offense. And a first and goal at the four-yard line. One thing Matt Leinert needs to be aware of now, the play clock is down on side of 10. They were late getting this play in. They can't afford to delay a game here. Southern California goes from the eye on first and goal. Hand off right side. There's a spin from Herschel Dennis, the sophomore, who has all of the experience at tailback. The three freshman running backs back him up. I think one of the best players in all of college football this year is Carlos Dansby, number 11, an outside linebacker from Auburn. He's the guy who comes knifing in there, and if he gets those arms around you, he's not going to let go. Dansby, a preseason All-American pick, second down and goal. Steve Smith, a true freshman, winds up split wide left. Here's Leinert deep in the end zone. Touchdown! Matt Leinert's first completion as a collegian goes for a touchdown. And he went to the right guy. A huge wide receiver. Mike Williams is six foot five and every bit of 230 pounds. He was in the slot. He ran the slant. And he's a huge target in there. He's as big as most tight ends. Take a look now what Matt Leinert sees. Now remember, he's six five, so he's got good sight. And he throws to a 6-5 receiver, and that's pitch and catch, baby. Colleen on for the extra point. It's up and it's good. What a way to start for a new quarterback. One for one, and his team's on top. Oh, Matt Leinert might have written the first paragraph in what he hopes will be a lengthy autobiography. Something to tell the kids someday, huh? And if you're Norm Chow, uh, his coach and offensive coordinator, you could not have scripted it better. Get your quarterback, great field position, call a couple safe plays, get a pass interference call, and then he gets a touchdown. Outstanding. Ryan Colleen to kick off for the second time. This is Trey Smith again. This time he grabs it at the one. And Smith cuts back to his right after the 20-yard line, and the Auburn Tigers will get it for the second time in the ball game. Another look at the touchdown. Well, this is Mike Williams, and he's going to run a slant, but watch these two guys. These are two new starters on the Auburn defense. Travis Williams, the linebacker, and Karibi Dide is the safety. They both get kind of fooled and out of position on the play, and Mike Williams settles right in between them and gives that quarterback a big target. A lot of returning starters on this Auburn defense, but two new ones got victimized on that play. And the secondary is of concern for the Auburn Tigers. First down and 10, Jason Campbell, one setback. 
Handoff goes to Ronnie Brown, this time number 23. And let's take a look at the Earthlink starting lineups, beginning with the Auburn offense. You've met Jason Campbell up front. It's Para, Reddick, Lindsey, Monrico, Crittenden, and Marcus Meniel. That right side is huge. Carnell Williams and Ronnie Brown open in the backfield. Obamanu, Courtney Taylor, and Cooper Wallace, the tight end. Tommy Tuberville in his fifth season as the Auburn head coach. Second and nine. Direct snap out of the spread, little screen, and Obamanu cannot hang on. It is knocked down. Southern California defense, and it's an outstanding unit that returns six starters from a year ago. Very tough to run against, and Udeze, Patterson, Sean Cody off of a knee injury, and Omar Nazel, a terrific front four. Grudegood, Lofa Tatupu, and Melvin Simmons are the linebackers. And the secondary, you've already met Darnell Ding. He's joined by Arbet, Leach, and Marcel Ohm. Pete Carroll, third year head coach, Southern California. And also the defensive coordinator for the Southern California team. He makes all the calls for this good defense. On third down, straight four-man rush. Into the flat, caught by Brown. Comes left. There's Marcel Allman is the first one there and gets a little help from Darnell Bing. Two third down plays for Auburn, both third down and long situations. That plays right into the hands of the USC defense, and that's because they defended the run on first down. Two excellent defensive series for the Trojans. And now punting for the first time in a ball game for the Auburn Tigers. It's a redshirt freshman named Michael Gibson. And Kevin Arbett, who missed all of last season with a foot injury, but was the return specialist two years ago, is back to receive it for the Trojans. Here's Gibson. Gets it away, not terribly deep. It will bounce at the 46. Arbett outnailed by Dansby. <laughs> oh, my. There is a flag down on the field, but that flag didn't go down nearly as hard as Kevin Arbett did. Flag at the 48-yard line of Auburn. Kevin Arbett missed all of last season with a foot injury. The year before, he was an all-Pac-10 special teams player. Last year, USC was last in the conference in punt return and kickoff return. Arbett trying to make something happen. Oh. Wow. Nice to have your best player. After the play was over, personal foul against the receiving team, 15-yard penalty, first down. And so the ball is marked back inside the 26-yard line. But Carlos Dansby giving you just a, a hint of why he's such a special player. He is special. That's the right word for him. He, he makes plays that you can't coach or you can't teach a guy to make. Well, a pretty decent special teams play by Dansby. Time has been called. Southern California, 7-zip, penalized 15 yards for an unsportsmanlike penalty after the punt catch. Now they have a first, ten at their own, first and 10 at their own 26-yard line. Here's Herschel Dennis, got some room. Rogers gets up with him, but a big gain on first down and 10. What a nice power run for USC. They lined up with two tight ends. It's a run formation, and it's an outside zone play. And Dennis just does a nice job of setting up the block by his tight end, Dominique Bird, and then cutting it back inside. When you line up with two tight ends and one back, it balances out a defense, and it makes it easier to run to either side. That's a gain of 22 for the sophomore tailback. Now this is Dominique Bird setting up tight to the left side. Leinert, quick hitch, Mike Williams. Makes the grab across midfield, out of bounds at the 48. Now let's uh, introduce you to the Trojan offense. The offensive line, Jacob Rogers, all Pac-10. Vandermeer, but Rogers has been hurt uh, with a foot injury. Katnick also missed much of the uh, two-a-days. Herschel Dennis, Lee Webb in the backfield. Mike Williams, Kerry Colbert, the wideouts. And the tight end, in place of the two-year starter, Alex Holmes, is Dominic Bird. Holmes with a back injury not yet ready to go. On second down, it's Dennis. 
And a nice play by Travis Williams getting his first start for the Auburn Tigers. Defensively, Williams, one of the linebackers. They've got great depth, particularly in the defensive line. They start Edmonds, DeMarco McNeil, Spencer Johnson, and Reggie Torbor. Two of the three linebackers we assume you have heard of. Dontarius Thomas, Carlos Dansby. The secondary, a bit of a trouble spot. Rose Green, D.D., Young, and Rogers. Liner pumps, pressure. Dontarius, oh, it was Brett Edmonds coming from the backside, number 94. And he forces him into the arms of DeMarco McNeil. Yeah, I'm not sure he got the first down, but I like the feel and the decision by Matt Liner. He wanted to throw quick. It wasn't there, but he didn't panic. He hung in there as long as he could, and then he went straight up the field and tried to get the first down. Didn't get it, but an excellent decision by the young quarterback. Tom Malone led the Pac-10 in net punt return, net punting last year. Trey Smith waits it at the 10. Here's Malone, the sophomore. Nice high, very deep. This one will come out to the 20-yard line. Midway through the first quarter, Southern California up by seven. Auburn Southern Cal, the season opener, CBS Sportsline, your home for college football. Get exclusive team rankings and live play-by-play -play for top 25 games. Go check out what you're missing at cbssportsline.com or on America Online, enter keyword CBS Sports Live. Campbell and the Tigers come back on offense, third set, unsuccessful so far. Yeah, and I would expect to see them maybe throw the ball on this first down play. They have not been able to run the ball with effectiveness on the two previous first down plays. USC doing a great job with their slanting defense. Double tight end set. Here's Campbell. Aroma Shadu makes the grab. He's out of bounds. Incomplete. And I'm not so sure that Marcel Allman didn't give away with a little push while the ball was in the air. Aroma Shadu made the catch, but he was out of bounds. But I think Allman gave him a shove while the ball was in the air that could have been considered pass interference. Watch Allman. He doesn't see the ball, but he pushed off. And there's the catch and both feet out of bounds. Aroma Shadu stays on the field, comes wide left. Little bump and run by Allman up tight. Double tight end set. This is a check at the line of scrimmage, and what Jason Campbell's doing is trying to run away from USC strength. Hand off up the middle. Cadillac Williams spurts across the 30. That is the first first down for the Auburn Tigers. Well, it starts with Jason Campbell recognizing where the extra defender is. Run away from that, and then watch the vision in the cut by Carnell Williams. Excellent job. Udizi was there to make the tackle, but Carnell Williams, almost impossible for one guy to bring down. Very shifty runner. Missed the last six games last year with a fractured leg. And this is Hugh Nall's influence as the offensive coordinator. Two tight ends. Let's run that football. Option. And Campbell decked at the 30-yard line, lost a couple. Nice play on the inside. This is a defense that Pete Carroll runs where they slant one way or the other almost every play. And the trick is, if you're an offense, is try to guess right which way they're slanting. There's Hugh Nall. It's a chess match between Hugh Nall, the offensive coordinator, who's also the line coach, and Pete Carroll, who is the defensive coordinator. Hugh Nall in his first season as the offensive coordinator. Up uh, in the booth, Steve Ensminger, his first year as the quarterback coach, he's actually calling the plays. On second down after the loss of three, Campbell has to head right. He's in trouble again. This defense is fast. Uh, you know, we see fast defenses in the SEC, and this defense is just as fast as any defense we see week in and week out in the SEC. That was Frosty okay. Rucker, a backup defensive end who transferred from Colorado State that was there to put the pressure on. Frosty Rucker actually redshirted at Colorado State as a linebacker. Transferred, sat out last year, and uh, we will see him quite a bit yeah. today. And another third and long, right into the hands of Pete Carroll's defense. See if they've got blitz on their mind. Jason Campbell thinks it's a blitz, and he's checking, and it is a blitz, but it's his own blitz. Campbell in trouble. Not the swiftest nor most elusive of quarterbacks, 
And he's down at the 35. It'll be fourth down. Good defense by USC. I mean, they called a blitz, but it's not an all-out blitz with man-to-man -man coverage. It's a blitz with a zone defense behind it. But they still are able to overload this side. But watch, this lineman drops out, and they're playing zone here. So there is pressure, but it's not all-out sell-the-farm pressure. But it still confuses the Auburn offensive line, and they've got to punt the ball game. Jeremy Wells is the deep snapper. Michael Gibson to punt for the second time. But prior to the snap, we've got uh, a motion penalty, and that will cost Auburn five. You know, one thing that I'm seeing right now, when we talk to some of the USC people and defensive people, they were taking it as a, a personal mano a mano physical challenge to stop the run. They were great last year. Movement by the offensive backfield. Five yards. Still first down. They were the best team in the Pac-10 in stopping the run. Only 83 yards per, per game. They never allowed a runner to gain over 100 yards. But a lot of people say, yeah, but that's the Pac-10. They can't <laughs> run out west. How can you stop a good power running team? So far, they are doing a nice job of stopping Auburn's run. Here's Gibson to punt. Pressure coming. He gets it away. Barely. Yes, he did. And it takes a sideways bounce. Then heads up field and is out of bounds. So good field position for Southern Cal. Man, I don't know how he got that thing off. Oh, I mean, there were a couple of USC guys in there quickly. Dallas Sartz, a backup linebacker, number 42, almost got this one. A 27-yard punt. Nada on the return. Still raining in New York City. Andre Agassi won the first set and is down love one in the second to Kofelnikov. Whatever happens, we'll be there all day tomorrow. CBS coverage of the U.S. Open Championship. First and ten. Leinert with a touchdown pass. This is Smith going in motion. Flag is down. Leinert fires it out to Williams who cannot hang on and he was open. Let him just a little bit too much. Yeah, I think they're going to get Smith for turning up field a little too soon. Again, he's a true freshman and has had an outstanding summer camp for USC, but that time a little anxious, I think, in turning up field. Now let's check in once again with Jill Arrington. Update on the weather conditions out here. If you look at the field, you can see luckily Auburn is completely in the shade on their sideline. USC completely in the sun. But the good news is USC's got that cool cape working. Just on that last defensive series, Jacob Rogers, their left tackle, was under there keeping cool. It keeps you at 50 degrees, so he's fresh to get back on the field. He's out there now, ready to go. We could use about six up here. <laughs> about six of them. And Jacob Rogers missed most of summer camp. Declined the penalty. And here is Reggie Bush, the freshman running back, one of three freshman running backs. And Reggie Bush, after the penalty was declined, goes over the left side. Well, Jacob Rogers is an all-conference performer, the left tackle. And he, he practiced the first two days of two-a-days, and then he had kind of a funny injury. He had a tendon injury in his left heel, and he could go straight ahead, but he was having trouble with pass set. And he sat out all the way up until this past Sunday was the first day back. Fortunately for USC, he's a veteran guy who was able to pick it up quickly. Third and five. Quick setup. Pass complete to the tight end, Dominic Bird, and he's now equaled the number of catches he had all of last season. And great protection right now for this USC offensive line. I mentioned that that Jacob Rogers just started practice on Sunday. Actually, last Sunday was the first day that the whole starting unit practiced together because the center, Norm Katnick, had been banged up. Lenny Vandermaid had had a little injury in camp. So Sunday was the first day that this starting offensive unit was at full strength. Colbert goes left side, double tight end set now on first down. Draw play, Bush breaks the first contact and picks up a couple. Reggie Bush, really a sensation in yeah. two -a days this fall. I think he's the real deal. I mean, they've got three outstanding looking freshmen, and this guy is the flashiest. I mean, of all the good backs that we'll see on the field today, this guy's probably the fastest. I mean, he was a great sprinter in high school, and he has the ability to take it to the end zone every time he touches it. The other two freshmen, for USC, Lendale White and Chauncey Washington are more pounding type running backs. This guy is flashy. Second down, seven. The only setback is Bush. Here comes the blitz. Liner pumps once. Looks deep. Left side. There's Williams. 
and uh, it's just about impossible. He is so big. And Mike Williams has a first down at the 10-yard line. Well, he's a huge target, but credit that USC offensive line. They picked up the blitz, no problem. And Matt Leiner, again, he's 6'5", so he's able to stay in there. Watch the blitz come and watch the offensive lineman just kind of sink in and stone them all. And Leiner's able to stay right in there and make the clean throw to Mike Williams. And again, that's a little bit too much cushion to give that guy. 26-yard gain. Here's the handoff to Bush. No, it's Herschel Dennis who is back in there. They'll rotate these backs in and out throughout the afternoon. A pass to Williams worthy of another look. Well, again, Matt Liner. He's six foot five. He's a lefty. He's showing the poise that he needs. He's staying in the pocket. He's trusting his protection. A lot of times with a young quarterback, they start to look at the rush, and that means they're not looking downfield at their receivers. You want to feel the rush and see downfield, and that's what Matt Leinert is doing right now. Four wideouts on second down and nine. Leinert looking to his left, drills it low and incomplete, intended for Justin Wyatt, number 24. I think this is a critical part of the game for the Auburn defense. They need to hold USC to a field goal here. This is not a de an offense that's built on playing come from behind and, and you know getting into a situation where they have to score a lot of points from behind. A run-oriented team, and right now this defense needs to step up. Now Smith goes wide left. Williams and Colbert both split to the right side. Williams is in the slot. That's where he caught the touchdown the last time. Here's Leinert looking for Williams. It's incomplete. It'll be fourth down. Carlos Rogers defending. And the field goal unit, Ryan Colleen, will come on to try the three-pointer. Now Tommy Tuberville telling us yesterday he felt it important to keep the crowd in this game. And you give up a touchdown, they become dormant, so very significant. And one of the best ways to keep the crowd in the game is to not give up any big plays to Mike Williams. He specifically said we cannot do that. They've given up a couple catches to him already, one for a touchdown. Ryan Colleen from 28 yards away. And it's good. Three twenty-one to go, first quarter. Trojans by ten. Better than eighty-six thousand on hand at Jordan Harris Stadium. Tommy Tupperville telling us in our conversation in his office yesterday that this was the most anticipated game in maybe 30 years here. He thought even more so than when Alabama played here for the first time in 1989. Well, they've not had much to cheer about thus far. Here's Colleen to kick off. It's 10-0 Southern California. Short kick. Smith again. Spilled at the 28-yard line. Next Sunday, the NFL on CBS kicks off our Super Bowl season. Here's the lineup for you. One o'clock, San Diego, Kansas City, New England at Buffalo. It's a busy day. Miami, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, Carolina, and Cincinnati all at home. And, of course, our coverage all begins with Jim, Dan, Deion Sanders, and Boomer Esiason next Sunday at noon. The NFL on CBS. Average starting field position. Difference of 30 yards. Yeah, and this is the best for Auburn right here. See what they can make of it. There's the handoff. Boy, the running game has been non-existent. Mike Patterson, the defensive tackle, got the penetration. Nowhere to go for Carnell Williams. And right now, again, they're guessing right. Pete Carroll is doing a nice job of guessing right on where Auburn wants to run the football. Again, let's get back to this run defense. Last year, they played against some good runners. Chris Brown of Colorado, Darren Sproles of Kansas State, Ontario Smith of Oregon, and they shut them all down. And here's a play fake. Campbell wants to go deep, steps up, goes short instead. And it's caught by Courtney Taylor, who has been the uh, most outstanding wide receiver in two days, and that gives Auburn its second first down of the ball game. And a good confidence play for Jason Campbell because he hung in there. He hasn't had much success so far, but he hung in there, and he found his favorite receiver right now, and that's Courtney Taylor. Plus, you get Courtney Taylor, who you expect to be a big-time player for you this year, you get him involved in the football game. Courtney Taylor, a former high school quarterback, redshirted a year ago and the Auburn defensive back said you got to get him on the field we can't stop him during uh, practices first and ten handoff they try to 
Sweet to the left side. Carnell Williams wow. fights for yardage. That should have been, for an average back, about a three-yard loss because Sean Cody shot right in there and had both hands on Carnell Williams. Watch the effort, the strength of Carnell Williams. Should have been a two-yard loss. Instead, it's a heck of a run for Carnell Williams. That didn't look like a Cadillac. That looked more like an SUV. Right <laughs> Second down and four. 10-0 Southern California. That becomes a power eye formation. William has some room. He's jolted, but he's got a first down at the 46-yard line. Yeah, they lined up in a little different type of a set, and then they went on a quick count. This was a good job by Hugh Nall. Line up in more of a power set. You got this extra tight end in there. It's kind of a short yardage formation, and then go on the quick count. And they kind of outnumbered and outflanked the USC defense that time. Brandon Johnson, the fullback, did a great job of leading it up in there. Brandon Johnson, number 45, a very vital part of this offensive set. Now double tight ends. One running back, two wide receivers. Again, Jason Campbell is checking probably to a run away from the strength. And Williams stopped essentially no gain on the play. One fifteen to go, opening quarter. See, last year when Auburn played USC, Troy Palomalu was the hard-hitting, run-defending safety for USC. And they felt like whichever way he went, the slant of the defense went the other way. Now, he's not on this team anymore. He's playing for the Steelers. So they're trying to figure out how are they rotating this defense. And on this series, Hugh Nall's guessing right. Here comes the corner blitz. Campbell in jail. Matt Grudegood. I think is an excellent football player. Now, he doesn't really look like it. He doesn't look like Carlos Dansby. He's 5'11", he's 215, he was a defensive back, he got too big to play safety, they moved him to linebacker, but he is extremely active. 81 tackles last year, he led the team, he led the team in sacks, he led the team in tackles behind the line of scrimmage, and he made a big play there. Loss of five, third and 15 at the 50. Out of the spread, two wide receivers, left side. Screen pass, right side, Carnell Williams. That could be a fumble. Adds a fumble if he is ruled oh, a head possession. Incomplete. Oh. The umpire is calling it incomplete. Larry Leatherwood. I thought maybe he had possession. Again, we see the speed of the USC defense. Closing on this, Will Poole, a redshirt senior, knocked that ball loose. I still think he had possession. I think you're right. I think Auburn caught a break. Cody Bliss, another freshman putter. He's a high school graduate last spring. He's on to punt now after Gibson almost got that last one blocked. Now, Tommy said this guy is probably better, and he may be in there quickly. Cody Bliss averaged 46.9 last year at the Brentwood Academy. And I'll bet you after that effort, he's going to be the punter the next time they have to give up the ball. Cody Bliss, Brentwood, Tennessee. That's the end of the first quarter. Our score, 10-0 USC. We'll return to Jordan Hare right after this message and this word from your local station. We welcome you back to Jordan-Hare Stadium on the campus of Auburn University. Southern California leading 10-0 as we get the second quarter underway. Glenn Lundquist, Todd Blackledge, and Jill Arrington. Here's Leinert. Goes back to his right and makes the catch. And Mike Williams is free all the way to the 25-yard line. A 15-yard gain for Mike Williams who has a touchdown catch. That was the first score of the game, followed by a field goal. And Southern California with a big play to open the second quarter, and they've dominated so far. Yeah, they really have. And I was just about to say before that play, this is a big test for Matt Leinert now. Bad field position. They've controlled the game. Stay in control. You know, make the right play. Don't do anything dumb with the football. And he made a great read and came back to the single coverage to Mike Williams. First down play, Leinert. 
And off right side, Herschel Dennis charges out to the 29-yard line. There are two things that I'm incredibly impressed with so far in this football game for USC. Number one is the poise of Matt Leiner. I mean, he just looks like a cool veteran. He doesn't look like he's playing his first game as a starter. He looks like he's in full command and full control. And the other thing is how well USC is doing against Auburn's run. I mean, those two things in that first quarter is what has stood out in this football game. Second down and six. Line it with a quick setup again. Boy, he does look sharp. There's Williams. And a poor effort at tackling. And Mike Williams with another catch. Well, he replaces a Heisman Trophy winner, Carson Palmer. And Matt Liner talked about that effort. I'm trying to block out everything. I'm just trying to play smart and know what I got to do, you know, play by play. I can't, you know, think about the crowd or think about what they're doing. I just got to focus in on what my job is and leading my team. And, you know, that's what I plan on doing. Yeah, I don't know if it's just a California thing, but these guys are so cool. I mean, quarterback <laughs> from California, I mean, they just, stuff just doesn't bug him. He's not bugged by this. Nah. Screen pass. Caught behind the line by Reggie Bush, and DeMarco McNeil was right there. Yeah, well, DeMarco McNeil is a veteran guy. He's a senior. He's healthier than he's been in about three years. He's had a bad knee, an arthritic knee. He's about 20 pounds lighter than he's played, and he uh, he reacted quickly to that screen play. And one of the few negative plays that we've seen registered by this Auburn defense. That is a loss of six. It's second down, 16. One setback. Bush coming left. Good pursuit defensively this time. Don Terrius Thomas, number 54. Yeah, and Travis Williams. Both those linebackers read and got there quickly. Sometimes it just takes, uh, you know, a big play by somebody. Maybe that play by DeMarco McNeil did something. Watch these two guys, Don Terrius and Travis Williams. They got there. They had great leverage. Good defensive play against the run. Third down and 16. Again, Matt Leinart needs to be smart with the football. If something's there, great. If not, take what you can and punt the football. Auburn will send a four-man rush. Leinart, Mike Williams, hit, fumble. That is ruled an incomplete pass again. Don Terrius Thomas thinks he's got six. But, uh, well, we've seen one both ways now, haven't yeah, we? Yeah, we sure have. Carlos Rogers was there in coverage. And, the, you know, the thing about defending Mike Williams on a slant, it's he's almost unguardable because he's so big. Watch the quick slant. His body's so big you can't get around him. But the next best thing you can do is to try to drill him when he catches the football. And that's what Carlos Rogers did. He drilled him right in the back, and Mike Williams was bobbling that the whole way. Good call by the officials on the incomplete. Now, that was not a catch. Nope. Tom Malone on the punt for the second time. Trey Smith. They came after him. Nice and high, and this will go out of bounds. And it's going to result in a very short kick. It was way left. Auburn took a shot at that one. The USC had two punts blocked last year. Tom Malone's got a great leg, but he better get it off quicker than that. 25-yard punt. 10-0 USC. And even a dozen minutes to go before the halftime break, Auburn with its best field position of the game now to open the drive. They start at their own 40-yard line. But they have not been able to do what they do best, and that's run the football. Only 21 yards on 11 carries. Ronnie Brown is the tailback now with Brandon Johnson, his fullback. And again, Jason Campbell changing the play. Just does get it off. Campbell goes deep left side. Little hitch and go. Time now for the SEC moment presented by Sonic. And for more, let's go down to Jill Arrington. Uh, Vern, the 1987 Citrus Bowl was the first meeting between USC and Auburn. Auburn's offense was led by All-American running back Brent Fullwood, who rushed for 152 yards and a touchdown. 
But that Tigers defense held Trojan quarterback Rodney Pete to only 113 yards while throwing four interceptions. Auburn went on to win it 16 to 7, recording the Tigers 500th all-time win. With only 21 rushing yards today. They better pick it up for Auburn if they want to control this game, Vern. Yes, indeed. Here's a play fake. Campbell looks deep for a comeback pattern. Terrific downfield coverage. Kevin Arbett really had a fine job of covering the intended receiver. Well, it's excellent coverage because Frosty Rucker, who's the end, he has no idea. Watch number 90. He still thinks the running back has the ball. He's chasing the play, and he's got to be out there to contain the quarterback. But because the coverage was so good downfield, it, it didn't turn out to be a big play, and it brings up another long third down situation. Third and eight. And time has been called. 11 minutes, 47 seconds to go. Tommy Tuberville's team struggling thus far. They trail by 10. Catherine Morris stars in the next great crime drama from the producer of CSI. Don't miss the premiere of Cold Case, Sunday, September 28th, right after 60 minutes. Third and long again. She's short. A very tall lady. <laughs> third down eight. Auburn yet to convert a third down. Their average need has been 11 yards. Here comes the blitz. Campbell. Steps up, fires it, man open. It's Courtney Taylor. They've got a first down on a third down conversion for the first time this afternoon. And a nice job by that Auburn offensive line. It was a blitz, but it was a zone blitz. And this time, there was no confusion. They picked it up, and Jason Campbell was able to hang right in the pocket and make the throw to Courtney Taylor. This play took a while to develop. There's the blitz coming, but it's a zone defense, and here's Courtney Taylor. Just finds the hook area. And a big first down conversion for the Auburn offense. That's a gain of 15 and a first down at the USC 43-yard line. Ronnie Brown goes left, tries to use a block of Brandon Johnson, but he couldn't get far enough upfield. Nice play by Sean Cody. I mean, this is a guy who is so excited to be back on the field for USC. Injured his knee midway through last year. Watch him knife in there. Number 85. He beat. Beats the block of Monrico Crittenden, number 84, and doesn't let go of Ronnie Brown until help comes. Sean Cody, who grew up a Notre Dame fan, his dad, a big Fighting Irish fan, he said he didn't make his decision between the two schools until the night before letter of intent signing. Here's Campbell. It's caught by Taylor at the 40-yard line. He pays a price. Boy, Melvin Simmons just drilled it. I'm going to tell you what, now, these are two physical defensive football teams. Courtney Taylor fighting for extra yardage. He stood up, and Melvin Simmons and Grudegood come and just put the wood on him. Man. Melvin Simmons, one of two captains, a one-time participant in the program at Washington State before transferring to Southern Cal. Third and long again. Here's Campbell. Watch out, lets it go, got a man open, oh. and he drops the ball. Ben Obamanu had a first down plus. Just about every third down play, USC is zone blitzing. And the last couple times, the Auburn offensive line has picked it up pretty well. Jason Campbell stepped up in the pocket, and you can't throw it much better than this. Obamanu's got to make that catch. It looks like he got a little distracted with where the sideline was, and Jason Campbell knew they missed a great opportunity right there. Watch for the fake punt. This is the area they might do it. Brandon Johnson is the guy they might snap it to. They look at a fourth and eight, and Bliss does get the snap nice and high, and a fair catch called by Arbet at the 11 yard line. Nine forty five to go first half. Pete Carroll's USC Trojans lead by ten. Ouch. Tuesdays this fall on 
CBS. And what this feels like right now to me is this is Carlos Dansby time for Auburn. They've been pretty much stymied, and he is the kind of guy that can make the unusual play. Here he is right here. I just have a feeling he's about ready to make something happen. Leinart has played very well in the first quarter and a half. Here's a handoff. Dennis cut down as he gets to the 17-yard line. Carlos Rogers with a fine tackle on Herschel Dennis. You're not kidding because uh, Dennis had some room. If he gets away from Carlos Rogers, he's got a lot of open territory. That is an excellent open field tackle by Carlos Rogers on Herschel Dennis. Leinert, 7 of 11, 69 yards. He's found Mike Williams five times. And he's calling signals now on second down and five. Up the middle, Dennis, spin move. Donna Young, number 10, made the tackle. Well, we've talked about Matt Liner being a, a cool California quarterback, kind of a surfer dude, but uh, here's more from Jill. That's right. Talk about cool. Matt Leinert's girlfriend, Veronica Kay, was a national high school surfing champion in 1997. She's now a professional surfer and has an endorsement deal with the ever popular Roxy Clothing Company. She's also starred in a TV show, Boarding House. Veronica's advice to Matt was keep your head up, never have that, never give up attitude. He seems to be doing pretty good today. Pretty poised out there, huh, Todd? Excellent poise. <laughs> Outstanding poise. There's a big play. Doug Langenfeld, a junior college transfer from Charleston, South Carolina. He played his junior college ball at Reedley College in California, and he just gets off the ball. Great job, just, just beats the block. Just his quickness got him across the line of scrimmage, and he was there waiting for the ball carry. Loss of five, second down and 15. Langenfeld actually worked as a forklift operator when he did not qualify academically right out of high school. Here's Leinert. Nice poise there. And Greg Gunther, the backup tight end, number 44, makes the catch. Gunther, who is a starter on the basketball team after football is over. I saw him against Arizona last year. Ten points and ten rebounds. Double-double. That's pretty good. Yeah, he can play. He's a big target, too, now. I mean, six foot eight for your tight end. Nice target to throw to. Third and nine. Kerry Colbert has only had one ball thrown to him. He's in the slot up here, number 83. Keep your eye on him on this third down play. Pressure, Leinert. Tipped. Incomplete. Almost a terrible decision by Matt Leinert. It was a bad decision because the Auburn defense won on that play. Jay Ratliff was in there with the pressure, and that's one where the young quarterback probably should have just taken the sack. He almost threw a dangerous interception. But credit Jay Ratliff for getting in there and putting the pressure on the quarterback. Tom Malone to punt for the third time, and Trey Smith awaits it at the 30. And they almost got the last one. Return is on this time. Boomer. It is. Smith drifts all the way back to the 14-yard line. Good. And a wonderful downfield play. Will Poole, number 28. Special teams highlight for the USC Trojans. Welcome back to Auburn, everyone. Just a reminder, Spencer Tillman will join me for the Earthlink Halftime Report, and we'll get you caught up on a busy day of college football, including the dawning of the latest era in Alabama football. How did Mike Shula do in his Crimson Tide debut? We'll tell you on the Earthlink Halftime Report. <laughs> All right, Tim, thank you. And on the field, the Auburn Tigers trailing by 10. You know, I think the Auburn defense has kind of settled into this football game now. They've got their feet under them. It's time for the Auburn offense to get a little more productive. They had that drop pass on the last series, and they don't have great field position here. And the play clock expired. Now that, that should never, ever happen. Out of a timeout. Out of a timeout. 
you run onto the field and you get a delay a game. Again, now Auburn's got a little different setup. First down. Hugh Nall is the offensive coordinator and the offensive line coach. Steve Ensminger is the quarterback coach who's up in the booth. Here's the play clock down here. Steve Ensminger is calling the plays. They're signaling it in through the running back coach, Eddie Grant. There's Steve Ensminger. So a little bit of different chain of a command than you see with other teams. Here comes the blitz, the handoff, Ronnie Brown. Around the right side, a flag is down, and this one uh, looks like it's going to go further to the north. It'll go against Auburn. Now, one of the things that I think Pete Carroll and his extensive NFL background has done for him, in the NFL, I think coaches do a great job of, of adjusting on the fly. When they see a team do something offensively, they make a quick adjustment to it. Oh, Face mask on USC will give Auburn some breathing room here but you know I look at what they're doing in this first half last year in this ball game they gave up 246 yards of offense to all during the, the run first play half. personal foul face mask against the defense 15 yard penalty first down now this one comes all the way out to the 32 yard line and Pete Carroll trying to get some information as yeah. to whom they well, called it on. I, it wasn't on the tackle, the ball carrier. It was away from the play somewhere involving another Trojan defender. Nonetheless, a costly penalty for Pete Carroll's defense. And a first down, Auburn at their own 32-yard line. Brown comes in motion and sets up wide to the right. Campbell comes his way and overthrows him. Campbell has been very erratic. Well, and he telegraphed that one. And Kevin Arbett, number 30, was reading it all the way. And they brought Brown out there, and Jason Campbell was looking there all the way. And Kevin Arbett saw that as well. Second down and 10. Silas Daniels, the lone receiver wide left now, top of the screen. Draw play. Contact made behind the line. And uh, let's take another look at that face mask. Yeah, it happened inside. Watch Mike Patterson grab the face mask of the center, Danny Lindsay. It's away from the play, but the umpire is staring right in there. And there it is right there, the tug on the helmet, the face mask of Danny Lindsay. And 15 yards for Auburn, but yet another third and long for the Auburn Tigers. Now third and nine at the 33. Spread formation. Campbell steps up. Nobody open. He'll have to run. Gets a great block from Ronnie Brown, but he is short of the first down at the 41-yard line. We have seen a couple big hits by Will Poole. I think we're going to have a fourth down situation. That was a good decision by Jason Campbell to run. He didn't see anything. Now this, even though they're on their own 40, this is where we were, we're going to see a fake punt here. They've got a spread formation, and it's a direct snap to Brandon Johnson, number 45. They only need one yard or two yards for the first down. Here's Brandon Johnson right here. Watch the fake punt. On the inside. Jeremy Wells is the snapper. Nope. Nope. Tommy tricked us, didn't he? Yes, he did. <laughs> so the punt, 40 yards, nothing on the return. Well, I've been waiting since the Sun Bowl in El Paso, Texas, last December 31st to introduce the next segment. It is time now for the Aflac trivia question of the day. <laughs> You're in fine mid-season form. <laughs> Been practicing. How many conference titles has Auburn won? Conference titles. <laughs> Key is conference titles. I don't want to give it away. Here's Liner handing off to Reggie Bush. Bush goes right. Spencer Johnson with the tackle. Reggie Bush, we've talked about three freshman tailbacks. This fellow finished third in the 100 meters in the state high school in California last year with a time of 10.45. He averaged 
12 yards per carry over his high school career. A little less than that this afternoon. Yeah. But he does have that breakaway speed, and if he gets out into the open field, he's going to be tough to catch. Second down, 11. Deep handoff, Bush. Cuts it back. Tries to find space. Flag is down. This is probably going to be a hold against USC. Yep. If you want to get technical, I guess that's illegal use of the hands. Bobby Gaston would prefer that we get technical. Let's do it. Bobby, who is the director of officiating in the Southeast Conference. A legal block in the back. During the run, block in the back by the offense, 10 yards, repeat second down. Now Pete Carroll in his third year, great recruiting class this year, judged by some who uh, specialize in that sort of thing is the yeah. best in the country. Louis Chauncey, Washington, Lendale White. Lendale comes from suburban Denver area. Played at Denver South and Littleton Chatfield there and became the all-time leading rusher in Colorado high school history. High school coach was Dave Logan, whom you remember. Mm -hmm. Former Cleveland Brown. Right. And here is Dennis getting a couple. Dontarius Thomas, number 54, makes the tackle. Dontarius Thomas graduated last spring, has his degree in management information systems. He's one of six young men on this Auburn squad who've already earned their degrees. Played high school ball at Perry, Georgia, about an hour south of Macon, and uh, had to make a decision to come back this year for his senior season instead of uh, opt to play on Sunday. He and Carlos Dansby made those decisions independent of each other, but key for Auburn's hopes this year. Third and 16 at the 13. Herschel Dennis. And it'll be fourth down from the 23-yard line. Pretty conservative play call by Pete Carroll and Norm Chow, but they would be thrilled to go into the locker room up by 10. There's a player down at the 15-yard line. Lanny Vandermade. Left guard. A four year starter for the Trojans. Well, Jacob Rogers has been hurt through camp, as has Norm Katnick, the center. And Vandermade, they're looking at his right ankle. Take a look at him. Here he is, right in here, number 78. And his right ankle is going to get rolled uh, on right yep. there. An inadvertent play. Man, you got big bodies flopping around on each other in the trenches, man. That is a, some dangerous action. The good news for Lenny Vandermade is it's almost halftime. And if it's not too serious, he'll have a little bit of a break here to get some treatment, maybe get it retaped or rewrapped and try to get back in this football game. That's good to see him walking off under his own power. Now there is a contingent of Southern California fans here in this uh, sea of orange. 86,000 plus the USC faithful located in the northeast corner of Jordan Hare Stadium. There they are. Over the six of the 20 Some of them. Well, that's in the upper end zone. Those are really the euchre seats. <laughs> wow. That is nosebleed area. Yeah, travel all this way and get a seat there. <laughs> I'd be firing my travel agent. Here's Malone with the punt. We've got under three to go. First half, Trey Smith gathers it in, sure-handed. And this will be the best field position for Auburn in the ball game. A 43-yard punt, Trey Smith with 11 on the return. Well, the match has been suspended at the U.S. Open. They got underway, and then uh, the rains began to come. Andre Agassi won the first set in his match against Gafelnikov. Full coverage tomorrow, beginning at 11 o'clock Eastern time, as CBS presents the U.S. Open. First down and 10. Ten. 
Here's Campbell. Wants a bunch. Overthrows Courtney Taylor, who then lost his helmet in the hit with Jason Leach. <laughs> a helmet snapper. Man. I mean, Jason Leach, at first I thought, man, if he plays the ball, he might get an interception because this ball was thrown ill-advisedly Ill by Jason Campbell. But Leach says, no, I think I'll go for the hit. And it's a good hit. Shoulder first, not helmet first. And Courtney comes up without his. Physical football. Both these teams, very, very physical. Oh, you heard of a de-cleater. That was, yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Second and 10. Zone blitz look. And here they come. They'll pick up by Cadillac Williams. Campbell has to run. And completes the pass at the 49-yard line. Ben Obamanu, who dropped uh, that sure first down earlier in this quarter inside the 10. And heads up play by Jason Campbell. Rather than force it and try to get all of it, he dumped it off underneath and he brings up a third in a manageable situation. They have had so many long third down situations. This is third and six. Much easier to convert. Third and six from the 49 with 2.28 to go before the break. 10 nothing. Southern Cal scored on its first possession, Matt Weiner to Mike Williams. And then got a 28-yard field goal. All of that in the first quarter. Gamble with pressure again. He's got Jarris McIntyre, number 81. And the ball has been moved inside the 35-yard line for the first time tonight by the Tigers. Oh, a backup wide receiver, Jarris McIntyre, probably the fastest of all the wide receivers, gets good separation from our bet and then gets that speed to the inside. He kind of jammed himself off of our bet, got the separation, and Jason Campbell able to find him over the middle. McIntyre's first catch, an 18-yarder. First catch of the season. And a first and 10 with 2.03 to go before the break. Play fake. Campbell looking deep. Has to run. Good decision. Yep. Good decision. I mean, don't make a bad play right here. Sometimes the defense wins, you know, and, and a young quarterback, that's one of the hardest lessons that you have to learn. Jason Campbell, he's been around the block. He's played enough games to know sometimes they guess right, sometimes they cover all my receivers. Just don't make a bad play. Man, so Jason Campbell out of bounds with the loss of two at second down and 12. Three wide outs, split left. Carnell Williams, the lone setback. Campbell, that ball is tipped in the line. Sean Cody. Sure was, Sean Cody. They ran a little twist on the inside. Cody's the defensive tackle, watch him twist in there. Ran a twist with the other tackle and got his hands up and knocked the football down. Just kind of drove right through the block of the center, Danny Lindsay. Auburn Tigers set out in the first half only one time last year. That was in the Capital One Bowl. They came back and won it 13 to 9. Campbell 6 of 16. Very modest numbers here in the first half. Lindsey snaps they it They didn't back. get it off, did they? No flag. Now he throws it away, and he does manage to dump it. No, there's a flag at Campbell's feet. He well, was not outside the tackle no, spot. You're right. He was not outside the tackle spot, and that's probably going to be intentional grounding. You've got to get outside that area and then throw it past the line of scrimmage. There is no foul. There was a receiver in the air. And now they're saying there was a receiver, but this was a different look. Only three defensive linemen, but they still brought pressure. Again, it's not an all-out blitz, but it's enough pressure to confuse the Auburn offensive line. You got two guys running in there free, and you got a bunch of blockers up there blocking air for Auburn, and it was a nice disguised defense on third down for USC. And Cody Bliss is on the punt again. Replaced Michael Gibson after the second punt. Jeremy Wells is the deep snapper. He's one of the six who has already graduated from Auburn. Nice and high by Bliss. 
Now see what kind of coverage they get. They get good coverage, and it's down at the five. Cody Bliss, nice pooch punt. And good downfield coverage, and it is time for the answer to the Aflac question of the day. How many conference titles has Auburn won? Nine. That is the Southern Intercollegiate Athletic Association. Then the Southern. Fool me. From the five. 132 to go before the break. Oh, Lee Webb, the fullback. And that's a gain of four on first down. Herschel Dennis and Dispenser Johnson's arms. Auburn has two timeouts left. See if they try to stop the clock here. If they would have stuffed them on that play, they would have used one. Yeah. But that was a good solid run for five yards by USC. You see what Tommy Tupperville is just asking. How many timeouts do we have? I mean, if you stuff them or knock them back on that first down play, you use one right now, and you hope that you can force a punt from deep in their territory. But that was a good, strong run by the Trojans. And here's another. Dennis out to the 13. Coming up on the Earthlink Halftime Report, Tim Brando, Spencer Tillman. Good to have them with us here in Auburn. They'll be with you live, and they'll get you caught up on this busy first weekend, first full weekend of college football. A special report on the beginning of the Mike Shula era at Alabama. The Earthlink Halftime Report. Well, I just can't emphasize enough how strong of an effort this has been from the Pac-10 representative here in a hostile environment. They have dominated things up front, particularly with their defense. Here's the handoff again, and uh, that might be enough. It will be a first down, and that's the final play of the first half. Touchdown pass from Matt Leinert to Mike Williams after a Darnell Bing interception. That gave USC a 7-0 lead. And then a short punt set up a short drive, culminated in a 28-yard field goal. Auburn has not threatened. They did uh, have a drop pass at the 10-yard line of USC midway through the second quarter. They also managed to get to the 35 before being forced upon a moment ago. And let's go down to Jill, who's with Tommy Tuberville. Uh, Coach Tuberville, after a slow start, your defense has stepped up for you in the second quarter. But what about your running game? We've heard a lot about it. How do you get Carnell and Ronnie involved? Well, they're putting eight, nine people in the box, and we've got to throw it. And uh, one thing, when we throw the ball, we don't have time to throw it. Jason's having to scramble. So we've got to do a better job with pass protection. And uh, But we've got to run the ball. We can't go out there and throw it ever down. But uh, we'll be out. We're, we'll come back. All right, Coach. Thanks a lot. All right, Joe, thank you. That's the end of the first half. Our score, 10-zip. Tim and Spencer, join us here for the Earthlink Halftime Report. After this word from your local station. Charlie Sheen and Two and a Half Men from your CBS Monday, September 22nd after Raymond. And later this week, don't miss Nicolas Cage, Whoopi Goldberg, and General Tommy Franks. Congratulations to Dave and The Late Show, celebrating 10 great years on CBS. And right now, let's go down to Jill Arrington, who's with Pete Carroll. Well, Coach Carroll, you were able to take control of this ball game early, take the crowd out of it. How pleased are you with the poise of Matt Leiner? Well, I think Matt's done a nice job. I don't feel like we've taken this crowd out of or controlled anything yet. We're sure hoping we can come back and play a heck of a second half. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing these guys come back and respond after halftime like we have in the past. So it'll tell the story today, but we have a great opportunity here, that's for sure. All right, Coach, good luck. Burn back to you. All right, Joe, thank you. Matt Leinert for the first half. 8 of 13, 74 yards, and a touchdown. We'll return to Jordan Harris Stadium right after these messages. All of that in the first half. We're getting set for quarter number three. USC leading Auburn 10-0, and the Trojans will receive 
to open the second half. Philip Yost, the kickoff man. And Kevin Arbet, the deep man for Southern Cal. A boomer. And it comes out to the 20 from which place the Trojan offense will take the field, but really hard not to be taken with what the defensive USC uh, effort has been in the first half. Yeah, I think that's really been the key to this football game. They have dominated play with the USC defense. They have stuffed Auburn's running game, only 35 yards rushing from a team that is excellent at running the football. And then when they've forced third down situations, they've been all long yardage situations for Jason Campbell and the Auburn offense. So really an impressive outing in the first half by the USC defense. And Matt Leiner getting the first start of his career has been very much in control. Quite cool in the cockpit. He'll open with a pass. Flips it out to Dominique Bird, and Bird gets a block from Gunther. Now he's got a downfield block from Justin Wyatt, and it is a huge gain of 43 yards for USC on the first play. Well, a pretty nice adjustment, obviously, by Norm Chow in the locker room. Play action. Watch the action go this way, and then the quarterback comes out on the bootleg. Gunther is the deeper tight end, and he's going to be the lead blocker. You see him peel back and get Travis Williams, and the shorter tight end, Dominique, gets the completion, and what a way to start again for Matt Liner. 43 yards on the first play in the third quarter. Dennis is the deep back. That's Colbert in motion. Leinert play fake, looks deep for Colbert. He's got him deep, and then he goes for Williams instead. And it is incomplete in the end zone. Ball got too far inside on Matt Leiner. When you're throwing a takeoff route like that, you don't want to bring the ball back inside. You want to keep it out over the outside shoulder. And Mike Williams is uh, hobbling off the field a little bit. You see Mike Williams, you want to throw that ball over his outside shoulder so he can go away from the defender. The ball's too far inside, and Leinert actually fairly lucky that he didn't get it picked. Karibi Didi, who's getting his first start, and Williams limping as he heads to the far side, second down and 10. Justin Wyatt takes his place. Here's Leinert, quickly out in the flat, caught. Steve Smith, the true freshman from Canoga Park, California, with the catch. Now let's check the uh, halftime numbers. Neither offense with a lot of offensive production. 144 for SC, but the third down conversions, USC was a little bit better than Auburn. And a lot of that was the result of just long yardage situations when Auburn had third down. Southern California with a third and four here and a 10 nothing lead. Deep handoff. Dennis cuts it back to the left. What a nice run. Yep. When you run a zone play like that, you tell the back, this is where you're supposed to hit the play, but if you see something the other way, go ahead and take the cut. See, he doesn't have it right there. Reggie Torbor was right in the running lane, and so he cut it back, and he got the first down. That was a nice piece of running by Herschel Dennis. And a fourth and one. I'm sorry, he didn't get the first down. I thought he did. 65 yards tonight. Kind of appropriate, isn't it, to see somebody named Herschel wearing 34? Walker comes to mind. Fourth and one. Dennis gets the handoff. The first down inside the 25-yard line. Great push up front by the SC offensive line. Now sometimes on fourth and one, you wonder why take that ball so far away from the line of scrimmage and give it to the eye back. But they got great push, no penetration by the Auburn defense, and an easy first down conversion. I, I really like Pete Carroll. I went out to USC last week and watched them practice, and he is such a high-energy guy. And, and his team, particularly his defense, they feed off of his energy. They think he's a defensive genius, and they think he, he allows them to play fast and play loose. and. He's just he's done an excellent job turning that program around out at USC. He's in his third season as the USC head coach. First game national prominence as a head coach with the Jets and the New England Patriots. Out of coaching for a year. Then Mike Garrett hired him to come in and resuscitate a USC program. And there's the first down carry Carlos Dansby on the tackle of Herschel Dennis. Fun to talk with Pete Carroll about the difference in the play for pay league and college football and how much he loves being back 
in uh, in the collegiate scene. Yeah, he really does. He felt like there's a, a little better, a higher level of tolerance in college football than there is in the NFL. That's and, nicely uh, stated. Yeah. I did like how he said that. Second down and 10. Liner with pressure. And Dontarius Thomas was uh, deep on Steve Smith. It'll be third down. That was excellent coverage that time downfield by the Auburn defense because Leonard had a long time to throw that ball. He stayed in the pocket. He stepped up and nothing opened up for him downfield. We're talking about Pete Carroll again. When he started his career at SC, they started, he started two and five. And from that point on, they went 15 and three. So, I mean, he has been hugely popular in the last year and a half. Third and 10 at the 24. Rush from the outside. That ball is tipped and incomplete. Fourth down. Bad throw by Matt Leinert. It was behind the intended receiver, Wyatt. On that quick crossing route with a speed receiver, you want to get that ball in front of him so he can catch it and keep running. See, the ball's behind him and high. And again, very lucky that one wasn't picked off. Travis Williams providing the coverage there for Auburn and a big stop for the Tiger defense. Now Ryan Colleen to kick for the second time tonight. One year ago, he was 16 of 23. This will be a 42-yard effort. Easily. Oh, he slammed that one through. Yes, he did. Ryan Colleen, two for two, 28 and 42. <laughs> Southern California playing at Auburn for the first time ever, up by 13. Fifty six yard drive nine plays Killeen authored a 42 yard field goal. The big play was a 43 yard pass from liner to the tight end helped set up the field goal Dominic Bird and here are Trey Smith and Carnell Williams to return return the USC kick and this will be Williams drifting back over the shoulder nine yards deep touchback it'll come out to the 20. Well Southern California is celebrating the 25th anniversary of its last national championship. 1978 team won a national title. They opened that season in Birmingham by defeating Alabama 21-14. Later won a split vote. They won uh, one of the two titles. And the other previous venture into this state, 1970, as Southern California defeated Bear Bryant's team 42-21. So first trip to Auburn, third trip to Alabama, the state. First down and 10. Play fake, incomplete. And those of us with uh, vivid memories of the late 60s and early 70s remember that 1970 game. One of the stars of that game was uh, Sam Cunningham, All-American at tailback U. Sam the Bam, over the top. Yes. Hmm. Second down and 10. Here's Campbell, got a little time, good blocking, but uh, nobody open, finally he gets rid of it. It's caught by Jarris McIntyre. Now time for the Home Depot coach's decision, and we're gonna take you back to that 70 game between USC and Alabama. Sam Cunningham rushed in that game for 135 yards and two touchdowns. His domination of the tie defense prompted Bear Bryant to invite him into the Alabama locker room after the game and tell his team this is what a football player looks like. Cunningham's performance encouraged Bear Bryant to recruit African-American athletes and ultimately led to the integration of football in the SEC. And Sam Cunningham is with Jill Aaron. That's right, Vern. Sam, did you ever know, did you have any idea what a huge impact you had on the face of the SEC? Not at that moment 33 years ago. Now, of course, I do because down here everybody comes up and thanks me for uh, the job we did back 33 years ago but uh, at that point in time no how impressed are you with what you're seeing on the field right now from the USC well I'm impressed because it's sticking together they're playing tough and they're, and they're playing as a unit and basically as a football team that's how you win and in talking
talking to Coach Bear Bryant back then. What kind of things did he have to say to you and thanking you for showing him what football's all about? I don't think I showed him what football was all about because he already knew that. But he was real, real uh, uh, thankful that we came down and did as well as I did, we did and, and, and thanked me for doing as well as I was. It was, it was a pretty awesome moment to be a part of that, that situation. There. All right, well, thanks for joining us. Talk to you soon. Back to you, Vern. Thank you very much. All right, Sam Cunningham, his brother Randall, resident of Las Vegas, longtime player in the NFL, as was Sam. Third down. Ludeze was hurt on that last play and uh, helped to the sideline. This one knocked in the air. It'll be fourth down, incomplete. Uh, Frosty Rucker, uh, specialized pass rusher in there with the rush. He comes in for Ludeze. And it's the defensive line. It was only a four-man rush, no blitz, but Rucker able to get those hands up, reading the eyes of the quarterback, Jason Campbell, and two for 10 now for Auburn on third down. And so the punt. Cody Bliss, Kevin Arbet is deep. What a terrific defensive effort we've seen from Southern Cal. Line drive punt taken by Arbet. Across the 50. Nice return by Arbet, but that was too low of a kick by Cody Bliss. I mean, you can't kick it straight down the middle of the field with no hang time to a good returner like Arbet. And USC back in business in great field position. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Aflac. Wrangler, Radio Shack, and by Michelin. Welcome back to Jordan-Hare Stadium. This ocean of orange about which we spoke at the beginning has become a, a sea of silence. Yeah. They've been taken out of this thing, the crowd has. Very quiet. And uh, Norm Chow, the USC offensive coordinator, has had a long time to think about this first down play because of the timeout. And I would not be surprised to see them try to get it all right here on a play action. Maximum tight protection and throw that ball down the field. Two wideouts, left and right. Here's Liner. here's play action. Deep across the middle, Dominic Bird. Got it. No, incomplete. There was a question whether it had been trapped. This was a good read by Matt Liner, but he just pulled the string on it a little bit. You know, when you see cover two, which means the two safeties are splitting and covering half the field, that opens up the middle. And the tight end, if he's got the speed, can get down there. And he just made a, a low throw. A nice effort by Dominique Bird, but too low of a throw by Matt Liner. Dominic Bird has caught a couple, including one for 43 earlier in the half. We have a penalty flag and a little discussion with the Auburn defenders. Substitution action against the offense. Five yards, still second down. I don't think Pete Carroll is going to accept the explanation. Mm -mm. Five-yard penalty makes it second down and 15. Second and 15 at the Southern Cal 47. Liner back on. Well, dusk descending here in Auburn, Alabama. And I'm not sure the uh, partisans of this Auburn Tiger team can believe what they've seen thus far. <laughs> I'm not so sure why they have it second down right now. The play will be first down over again. All right. Okay. I mean, the, the penalty was a five-yard penalty for a, a substitution violation, but it shouldn't have been a loss of down, and they made the correction, and so it's first and 15. Well, here we go. First and 15. Same formation for USC. Kratnik snaps it back to Leinert. Hand off. Herschel Dennis comes right over right tackle. Instant justice. 
Now, what kind of a day has Matt Leinart had in his first start as a collegian? All in all, pretty good. Very efficient. And this is why he won the job. He made good decisions. He managed the offense. He got the ball in the hands of the playmakers. He did it all summer, and he's doing it tonight. He's made very few mistakes, either mentally or physically, in this game so far. It hasn't been brilliant in terms of numbers, but it's been very effective. Second down. Steve Smith starts in motion. Play action. That one's red, and Leinert's down. Langenfeld, second sack tonight. Nice job by Langenfeld because he didn't get fooled by the play action. He stayed in his area of responsibility. A lot of times a defensive end chases that play. Watch Lagenfeld. He keeps his eyes on the quarterback. He doesn't get fooled by the fake. He keeps outside leverage and he makes the play behind the line of the scrimmage. Good discipline that time by the junior college transfer. Loss of five, third and 18. Deep right side, overthrown, incomplete. Good catch on the sideline. Intended for Justin Wyatt, Junior Rose Green was defending. Well, how big of a play was that play by Langenfeld? Huge. I mean, they had the penalty, but that sack was even bigger because it forces the punt. Another touchdown there by USC would have made it very, very difficult for Auburn to come back and win this game. Tom Malone to punt for the fifth time. Trey Smith pitches his 10 at the 15-yard line. And another side of the foot effort from Malone, and that one is out of bounds just inside the 20. Call it the 18-yard line. 38-yard punt. Time called, 9 minutes and 13 seconds remaining. Auburn will try to find some way to move the football. All right, Tim, thank you. Southern Cal leading here 13-0 with 9-13 to go, third quarter. Carnell Williams, the only setback. Two tight ends. And Campbell rolling out. Oh, catches the ball after it slipped out of his hand. Rudiger was right there. He, he's a lot like Carlos Dansby in the sense that he has the same kind of instincts. Grudegood's going to come from the left of the screen. He gets there in a hurry, and as soon as Campbell turns around, he's right there in his face, and he won't let go. And Campbell, very lucky that he caught that, because it probably would have been a fumble. But Grudegood, again, he's not an oversized guy, but he makes plays. He's got a real knack for being in the right place at the right time. And another bad first down play for Auburn. Loss of nine, second and 19, just inside the 10. Campbell will try to throw on second down. He's got... Obamanu wide open, and Obamanu almost fumbles. It is loose. Well, Marcel Allman hit him and knocked the ball loose, and it's a scrum right now. Who is strongest at the bottom of the pile, and it looks like the Trojans got it. That's Melvin Simmons, and that is Pete Carroll. I am so impressed with how physical this defense is. Darnell Bing, who began this game with an interception on a deflected pass, now recovers the fumble. It's a good throw. It's a good catch by Obamanu, but watch the hit by Marcel Allman, number eight. All right, it was Grudegood. I'm sorry. Grudegood hit him first, and then Allman came in and ripped the ball out, and Bing comes up with a fumble. We saw Grudegood on the sack. Now we see him in pass coverage with the big hit. A physical, aggressive, fast defense that has totally put the Auburn offense in disarray. And they just have dominated the football game. Out of concern, Tom Tumberville looks on. First down and 10. Southern California leading by 13. There's Leinert. He's got a man open, Colbert. But he has to go for the short receiver. And Justin Wyatt makes the grab. Let's go down to Jill and get an update on injuries. Clever, you saw Mike Williams and Kenichi Odizi lip off the field early in this third quarter. They're both suffering from cramps. They gave him a potassium pill. They put him under the cool suit, but now they've taken him into the locker room for more fluids. So I guess the humidity is getting to him. They need Mike Williams on the field right now. And see, the problem with that is if you have cramps now, you're, you're already behind. You're too far behind to get caught up. 
You won't get rid of those cramps until maybe the plane ride home. Second down. Leonard, left side. Incomplete. Boy, nice read by Karibi Didi, the safety. Young player read that one quickly and almost came up with a big play for the Auburn defense. Well, another significant play now for the Boy, Auburn defense. You're not kidding. Here's Didi. Hargrave Military Academy for a year and then a redshirt uh, freshman season last year. Getting his first start today. Third down and six. Leinert with time, deep, bobbled and dropped. Colbert was open. And should have had it. And you don't see Kerry Colbert miss many. I mean, he hasn't had many balls thrown his way tonight. That's only the second one. The first one, there was a pass interference in the first quarter. And this is a good throw by Matt Leiner. And Kerry Colbert could have put this game just about out of reach if he hangs on to that one. Ryan Colleen with a 35-yard field goal effort. Two for two tonight. Just inside the right upright. Good execution by the kick teams for USC. Last year they had eight kicks blocked. Two punts, three extra points, and two field goals. They've been flawless tonight. Disbelieving Auburn fan. 16 to nothing. Crowd has become quiet. Even a tear or two being shed. Or an itchy nose. Here's the kick. Colleen. This will be taken by Trey Smith at the 10. A chance to get some good field position now. Out across the 30 to the 33 yard line. He blew audiences away in the Matrix and the Sopranos now. Joe Pantoliano is coming to CBS as an FBI special agent who trains other agents how to go undercover. The Handler series premiere Friday, September 26th on CBS. He must be a USC fan because he had one of those high tickets, one of those <laughs> euchre seats. He, he's <laughs> way up in nosebleed. 16 zip. Jason Campbell and the Auburn Tiger offense. And the running game has not been there. Ronnie Brown is in there now. Well, one of the things that has uh, been a significant improvement for USC in the Pete Carroll years, how about a turnover differential? Well, I've always said that that turnover margin is one of the most telling statistics in all of football. And uh, that's phenomenal for those last two years, plus 34. They forced... 36 takeaways last year, 35 takeaways the year before that, and only 17 the year before Carroll got there. Second down and 10. They'll try to sweep left with Brandon Johnson leading the way. And Ronnie Brown out to the 45-yard line. Good run by Brown. Well, this was a good read by Jason Campbell and a nice play call because they guessed right. The pressure is going to come from over here. The running play is going to go this way. They guessed right where the pressure would come from. And they got a good positive run out of Ronnie Brown. Tough running behind his fullback, Brandon Johnson. But those kind of plays have been kind of few and far between for Auburn tonight. That is the longest run of the night for Auburn. Try it again. Brown darts to the outside, chased by... Darnell Bing, number 20, the true freshman. And Bing with two big plays tonight, an interception and a fumble return, fumble recovery. And wearing a previously retired number, that number worn by Mike Garrett when he won the Heisman. The athletic director now at USC, and another good run by Ronnie Brown. You know, the thing is for Auburn, the good news, there's still two touchdowns and two two-point conversions away from a tie. It's still the third quarter, so they don't have to abandon the running game. Stay with what they do best, and right now they're across the 50-yard line. Now a little bit of a spark now in the last two plays. Now Brown goes right, and the pile helps him move to the 45-yard line. That'll be close to a first down and 10. 
I thought it was interesting talking to Hugh Nall yesterday, the offensive coordinator and the offensive line coach. He says, I'm an old school kind of coach. I mean, the smaller the, the play package is, the better, the more comfortable I am. And if we get a play that works, I'm going to stay with it. I'm not going to change up. If they can't stop it, we'll keep with it. It's kind of the same kind of philosophy that Steve Spurrier had from a passing standpoint. He would call the same play if he didn't think a team could defend it. There's the measurement and a first down. Hugh Nall is uh, one of three men who are on Tommy Tupperville's coaching staff who also spent time coaching for Jim Wacker at TCU. College sports lost a great man this week. Jim Wacker died of cancer in San Marcos, Texas on Tuesday. Funeral services held yesterday. Jim, his wife Lil, three sons, Mike, Steve, and Tom. He was a wonderful human being. First down and ten. Campbell. Option. And Campbell still has it. Unbelievable play by Mike Patterson. A defensive tackle. I mean, a defensive tackle who weighs close to 300 pounds is not supposed to be able to chase a quarterback down on an option from the inside out. But that's exactly what Mike Patterson did. Jason Campbell audible the option away from the safety, and Mike Patterson made a heck of a play. Second down and 13. Boy, how many negative plays has the UCA USC defense created on first down? And that really has been a big story in the game today. Campbell, McIntyre, watch out for the helmet. And let's check in with Tim Brando for an update, Tim. All right, Vern, let's take a look at our Verizon Wireless top performance of the day. Chris Perry's 232 yards and two touchdowns was a school record for a season opener in Michigan's route of Central Michigan. Watch this play coming up right here, fellas. He scores on the counter tray. And I believe, Todd, you would agree he's the perfect complement, the run complement that John Navarre needs to make the Wolverines a national title contender. They look good today. Look good today. Best friend of a quarterback is a good running game. Third and nine quarterback draw. Campbell tries to go right. Has some room. Got a first down. I believe. Let's see where they spot his out of bounds movement. This could be closer than I thought. It initially looked like he was there. Great effort though by Jason Campbell. It was a designed quarterback draw on third down and pretty long. USC thinking pass all the way. They only went with a three-man front. They're going to drop into coverage, and it's just the speed of Jason Campbell to get outside a very fast defense. May have stepped out right before that. Very close. Whoa. A half a chain link, it appears. A smidgen. <laughs> got to go for this. Sure you do. I don't think you take the ball off the line of scrimmage. I mean, I think you just let Jason Campbell power it in there behind the center, Danny Lindsay. Campbell listed as 6'4", 223. So he's got some heft. So the key is to, to get low. Don't stand straight up where they can knock you back. Fourth and a link. Auburn trailing by 16. Waning moments, quarter number three. Got it. First and ten. See, this is a very fast and a very quick front seven of USC, but not a, an overpowering, not a huge defensive line. And that time, it was a mismatch up front on that short yardage play. Well, we have seen in this current drive as much spark out of the Auburn Tiger offense as we've seen all night long. This is a game that has been dominated by Southern Cal on their first visit ever to Auburn University. They scored on their opening possession. Matt Leiner to Mike Williams. Touchdown. Three field goals since then, and Auburn has not been inside the 30 yet tonight. Here's Carnell Williams, and he's dropped at the 34. Rudigood again from the backside. He was coming on a blitz, and he just kept steamrolling right to the ball carrier. You block everybody on the front side, 
but you don't account for the guy coming hard from the backside. And again, no gain, no gain on first down. I mean, that has been, USC has won first down. They have controlled the action on first down. This the 10th play of the drive, second and 10. High formation, and second down. Williams tripped over his own man. Oh boy. That's Marcus McNeil, number 73, who was trying to provide the blocking, and Williams found his right ankle. I don't know that I understand that call. Second down and 10, and you're running the football again, and you've, you've not had a whole lot of success running it. May have been safer with a quick passing game because now you've got third and very long again. Third How many as well. third yeah. and tens plus have we seen tonight? Campbell. Knocked down for a loss at the 40-yard line. I think Omar Nazel, number 56, got there first and knocked him off his balance. And then they finished him off, but it was Nazel. And again, when you get third and 12, it plays right into the strength. Here's Nazel, number 56. Watch the quick move. He gets the legs knocked out from Jason Campbell, and Campbell can't keep his balance. And Auburn with Marcus McNeil still on the ground. And uh, quick attention being paid to his right knee. You know, we made this point earlier in the game when we were talking about Pete Carroll. It, it's very rare that a head coach would also be the defensive coordinator. I mean, you know, you just don't see that very often, but that's, you know, that's his background. That's what he was. He has good position coaches, you know, for all the defensive positions, and he oversees it as the coordinator. Sean Cody was telling us uh, he thought of Pete Carroll as a genius, and yeah. he said one of the things he most appreciates about him is that he lets them play freely on defense. Yeah, free and fast. And, uh, boy, we've seen that tonight. McNeil remains down. Take a look at the injury. This is Mark this McNeil right there, number 73. And it's the guy from the backside that he doesn't see. The guy who got credited for the sack, Nazel, that got the sack and also uh, hit the backside tackle. Marcus McNeil is a, uh, a real specimen, 6'9", 332 pounds. He became the starter for the last six games last year as a true freshman, and this, uh, this doesn't look great. No. Well, they have asked for a stretcher to be taken onto the field. Things grow even more somber for Auburn. We'll be right back. Positive note just a moment ago, Marcus McNeil asked that the stretcher be taken back without him in it, on it. And he walked off by himself. So Michael Gibson is going to return and punt this one, his third punt of the night. On fourth down, just did get it away. Nazel was there, and a fair catch taken by Kevin Arbett at the 10-yard line. Now the lineup tonight on CBS. Begin with Hack, and then Craig Nelson in the district. After the completion of our ball game tonight from Jordan-Hare Stadium. In its 64th year, Named, of course, for Chuck Jordan, the winningest coach in the history of Auburn, and Clifford Hare, who was a member of the first football team at Auburn University, and later the dean of chemistry at uh, this fine school. First down and 10, University of Southern California. Quick flip, right side. Liner finds Mike Williams. Williams with that sensational freshman season last year, despite the fact the only had two starts. Kareem Kelly was the other starter last year. A young man from Tampa, Florida, who said uh, he wasn't really that highly recruited, uh, and they all wanted him to play defensive back. Yeah, they didn't think he was quite fast enough to be a wideout. Some of the Florida schools and uh, USC said, no, we think you're fast enough to play for us. It reminds us of Keyshawn Johnson, so come on out to the West Coast. Second down three. 
Now to the 21 yard line. Well, Mike Williams, just a sensational freshman season last year with a total of uh, 81 catches a year ago. 1,256 yards and 14 touchdowns, which equaled the mark set by Jabbar Gaffney of Florida in 2000. Those are freshman records. Chatting with him yesterday, Kerry Colbert, the other side uh, wide receiver, a speedster at 4.32. Mike Williams said, "Well, I'm 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 trying to shave something off of 4.5." <laughs> but he is the big target. I mean, he has just got great size for a wide receiver, and that's kind of the the craze now in football. The big wide receiver. First down, Leonard play fake. Goes deep, little crossing pattern by the tight end. Greg Gunther, it's incomplete. Second and ten. Again, Leinert has done a nice job of managing the football game tonight. You know, he hasn't made any real big throws down the field. He isn't putting up flashy numbers, but he hasn't made the big mistake. I mean, he has orchestrated things. He's been good on the play action. He's made good decisions with the ball in his hands. 12 of 24. Reggie Bush starts left, comes back right, and uh, gains two. You see young running backs try to do that. The, the instinct of a young running back who's used to getting big gains all the time in high school is to always try to cut back. And in high school, you can cut back and use your speed and outrun everybody, but not against a defense like Auburn that can run. you got to stay in that lane and stay in that crease and run that football. And get five yards if you can and call to win. Well, we've reached the end of three. Marcus McNeil hoping he can get back on the field when his team returns to offense. It has been a memorable trip thus far for the partisans of Southern California. The Trojans leading at Auburn 16 nothing. Last time the Tigers were blanked after three quarters. October the 2nd of 99 at Tennessee, they wound up losing by 24. USC on third down, third and eight. Leinert with four wide receivers in. Across the middle, Colbert leans out. That's going to be short of the uh, first down at the 30-yard line, so Southern California will have to punt it. Give it away. Their defense, again, it, uh, a lot of folks this year have been talking about Wild Bunch 2. Wild Bunch 1 was back in 1969. Yeah, well, this is a great defensive front. That was the Wild Bunch. And uh, this defense, a lot of people thought, and Pete Carroll included, this defense could be better than last year's defense. And they're off to a great start today. And this game reminds me so much of a game earlier today. We saw Georgia play at Clemson and just dominated the game with their defense in a shutout win. This is a huge huge 70 yards here's how much I know I saw Tom Malone before the game when it was really hot and I thought you know this guy's kicking way too much he was out there for a half hour straight kicking he's still booming it now in the fourth quarter Sixteen nothing Southern California continues to dominate the Auburn Tigers as this uh, defensive unit nicknamed Wild Bunch 2 has had a marvelous night limiting Auburn to 124 yards in the ball game. Here's Campbell play fake being chased heading right. Cody can't catch up and a four yard gain for Jason Campbell. Well that Wild Bunch won. 1969 was the year and uh, A.C. Collings on the left. James Gunn next, Bubba Scott, Charlie Weaver, Cody Smith, one time number one draft choice of the Dallas Cowboys. That was the defensive line. There are five men who were included in Wild Bunch, too. They uh, have made LaJuan Ramsey an honorary <laughs> member, and before the season's over, they may go to six and call Frosty Rucker a part of this group. Well, that was LaJuan Ramsey who forced Jason Campbell out of the pocket that time. Here he comes again. There he comes, LaJuan Ramsey, Campbell fumbles, and Ramsey got he is the only player on this Southern California team with Alabama ties. He was born in this state and moved to California 
when he was three years old. And on cue, he makes the sack. Well, he's coming from the outside, and he just runs right by the tight end, and that's the backup tackle, Jonathan Palmer, who is in the game for Marcus McNeil. And he was late on the switch, and he didn't pick up that rush from the backside. Ramsey stripped the ball out, and SC recovers. But it was the backup tackle in there, Jonathan Palmer, the redshirt freshman, who just uh, didn't react quick enough to the move by Ramsey. And so the opening minute and two seconds have been a continuation of this nightmare for Auburn. Three turnovers now recovered by Southern California. Dennis hit the line, breaks free, touchdown! And that is a perfect picture of a tired defense. A defense that's tired because their offense hasn't been able to control the football because they've been out there a long time. And we talked about the heat and humidity affecting USC, but it also is affecting the home team. Missed tackles, can't get off blocks, tired defense, and a huge lead for the Trojans. Galeen's extra point is up and through. Dennis from 14 yards out. And the Southern California Trojan dominance over the Auburn Tigers continues. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Fidelity Investments. DiGiorno. Dr. Pepper, and by Sprint. Almost to 23. Ah, there we go. Happiest group in the stadium when it's a defensively oriented game. <laughs> Especially when you're wearing a sweater in Alabama in August. I don't think that guy's in graduate school. Take a knee in the end zone. And let's uh, take another look at Herschel Dennis's touchdown. Yeah, I want you to look at two things. First of all, I want you to watch the blocks of these three interior linemen. That's Travis Watkins, the left guard, Norm Katnick, and Fred Matua. Watch them stick on their blocks. The linemen can't get off. Now watch the missed tackles. Here's going to be one right here by Don A. Young. Lamel Ages is going to come over from the other side, number 26, and get a hit. He misses a tackle. Three missed tackles after great interior blocking by the center and the two guards. And a nice touchdown. Very impressive by USC. Well, not only has USC forced three turnovers, they've made them count 17 points off the three. First and 10, Campbell. See, here's the thing. At halftime, Tommy Tuberville said, we're having trouble running because they're bringing eight and nine in the box. Well, that's true, but those aren't the guys that are making the plays. The guys that are making the plays are the guys up front who are knifing through and slanting to the play and making the play. That was Lawan Ramsey again from an inside tackle position. Now, he should not be an unblocked guy. He just beating them off the mark. Well, if you got a glimpse of last Sunday's sports page in the New York Times, you saw a huge color photograph of four running backs for the Auburn Tigers. Williams, Brown, Trey Smith, Brandon Jacobs. Tonight, they've gotten 39 yards on the ground. And let's go down to the USC sideline and check in with Jill Arrington. Well, Baron, I'm standing with USC's athletic director, Mike Garrett. Now, Mike, you must be so proud of what you're seeing on the field today. USC's dominating everywhere. Well, we're playing very well, very competently, and First game is the first game jitters, but we're doing very well. Now, Coach, why did you make the decision to unretire your jersey and let Darnell Bing wear it? And what is it like seeing it out there? Well, number one, when you're 6'2", 215, run a 4'3", 40, I mean, how can you deny him? And he's doing a great job tonight. All right, let's take a look at this play. All right, third down. Yeah. Out of the backfield, it's caught. Obamanu. Up near the 50 and out of bounds for an Auburn first down. Let's uh, revisit Jill. He looked 
pretty good out there with that interception that led to the first touchdown, a fumble recovery. Did you look that good in that jersey? We know you're a Heisman Trophy winner, too. Well, I never looked that big, I guarantee you, and uh, it looks pretty good on, on uh, Darnell Bings. All right, thanks a lot for talking to us. Good luck this season. Thank you. Back to you, Vern. All right, thank you, Jill. Five numbers retired, all Heisman Trophy winners at uh, Southern California. Mike Garrett uh, said, Pete Carroll said, if, you, if we let him wear number 20, I think we can sign him. Mike Garrett says, <laughs> how big is he? How fast does he run? It's done. Campbell, all down again. Sean Cody. They, they can't block the front four. Now, when we talked to Hugh Noll yesterday, he said he thinks that this front four is the best unit that they've ever faced. Sean Cody, number 84, he just runs. I mean, they don't even block him. I know there was some confusion there. Again, Jonathan Palmer is in to replace him, Marcus McNeil. And there was a mix up there between the guard and tackle because you don't turn a guy loose like that on your quarterback. Fourth sack of the night, a loss of 16. You know, I think this penalty is going to be against the Auburn sideline. I'm not sure what happened, if it was something said, but the linesman threw the penalty on the Auburn sideline. I believe you're right. Substitution violation. Can see offense five yards. Still second down. All right, here's the, the, the official that makes the call, and what he's looking at is this late guy running off the field. That's Anthony Mix trying to get off late, so they had 12 in the huddle. We've seen that on USC once, now one on Auburn. Here's Campbell, caught by Courtney Taylor. That'll be, uh, I believe, enough for the first round. 12 yards. Eleven twenty-five remaining. And another third and long for Auburn. Just uh, that's been a continuing theme tonight for the Tiger offense. Yeah, I lost my place there <laughs> in the book. <laughs> so, so the beginning of the ten-yard chain. Campbell got him again. This guy has had a great night tonight. Lofa Tatupu, who is the new starting middle linebacker, number 58, is the guy who gets the sack. Now he's replacing Mike Pollard, who is a two-year starter at middle linebacker. And Tatupu has had about 10 tackles tonight in that one for a sack. And if the name sounds familiar, it should. His dad, Mosey Tutupu, a member of the 1974 National Championship team and was uh, Lofa's high school coach in uh, the suburban Boston area. Mosey played with the Patriots for years. Here's a fine punt from Cody Bliss. That one into the end zone will come out to the 20 to 60 yard punt. 10 tackles for Tutupu tonight. Okay. Now let's check the CBS Sportsline stat of the game. Southern California with six sacks for 46 yards. Auburn's vaunted defense with one for five yards. Get complete college football stats at cbssportsline.com or on America Online enter keyword CBS Sportsline. First and ten at the twenty. Marshall Dennis. You know we've talked a lot about Matt Liner tonight and his poise and his first start. There was so much made this summer of a new quarterback coming to the USC campus, John David Booty from Shreveport Evangel High School in Louisiana. Very unique story, and a lot of people speculated that that he would come in and compete. And one of the reasons he came as early as he did was because he had a chance to compete. But Matt Liner clearly won the job. John David Booty's going to be an outstanding quarterback. Graduated from Evangel Academy a year early. Here is 
Mike Williams out of a tackle and then out of bounds with a gain all the way out to the 44 yard line. Well, John David Booty was scheduled to play his senior season at Evangel. This is the school that also uh, featured his brother, Josh Booty. His dad, Johnny Booty, was the uh, coach, one of the coaches there, and was released back in the spring. And John David Booty needed only one course, an English course, to graduate early. He took it in the summer and went out to Southern California, and many believe he is the quarterback of the future. But Matt Leinert has done good. nothing to uh, diminish his place tonight. Here's Dennis going back right. I also, I also caught Matt Castle over on the sideline wearing number 10. Yeah. And it gives me an opportunity to express my shock that number 10 has not been retired uh -huh. after Pat Hayden uh -huh. wore it in the, in, the, in the 70s. There's Matt Castle. Matt Hayden, of course, uh, not a Heisman winner, but a Rhodes Scholar and uh, one of the good guys. I get, I get to sit next to some smart guys at times, you know. <laughs> He's smarter than me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. You're taller than him. <laughs> you know, one other thing about John David Booty, and, and I don't know this for a fact, but my hunch is he's the only player on the USC team that has ever actually been to a game here at Auburn before today because his brother Josh and his other brother Abram, who was a wide receiver for LSU, he actually came to a couple games in this stadium to watch his brothers play. So uh, this is not his first trip into Auburn, but probably for everybody else on that Trojan sideline it is. And it has been memorable. 8.45 remaining in the game. Second down and 15. There's Williams. What a, what a, he's off to a great start. And, and that, Leonard is just so smooth. You know, before the game, I ran into Paul McDonald, who was the radio announcer, one of the announcers for USC. And Paul was another outstanding left-handed quarterback for USC. And he just said, you know, he's poised. He's making good decisions. And he looks a lot like Paul McDonald. They used to play a similar type of game. Matt Leinert has just been solid tonight. Williams now with eight catches for 102 yards. He had five 100-yard games a year ago. And he goes over triple digits in his first game of the 2003 season. On third down, Leinert got it. That should be enough to move the chain. Well, there have been some comparisons between 69 and 2003. In 69, a Heisman Trophy winner selected number one. It was O.J. Simpson. They had Wild Bunch one back then, a returning all-conference tackle, Sid Smith, in 69. But how about the last line? Yeah. Ohio State was the defending national champs in 69. Yeah, that's freaky. Now, Jacob Rogers, who's the returning all-conference player, just made an absolutely great play, picking off a blitzing safety, Richard Gilliard. And here's a pass a little too high. Incomplete, 7.27 to go. And it'll be second down and 10. Watching Mike Williams tonight, I'm also reminded that one of those who was on the sideline at Southern California was a, an All-American receiver in 62, a man named Hal Betzel, who uh, caught passes from Bill Nelson and Pete Beathard as they won a national title and then played in what might be regarded as the greatest bowl game ever. Southern California over Wisconsin, 42-37. A one versus a two, by the way. Here's second down. Lindell White, first carry of his collegiate career. A 69 team finished 10-0 and one, and wound up third in the Associated Press vote. You know, I think Pete Carroll did some really smart things with his football team in preparing for this game. One of the things he did early in training camp or somewhere in the middle of training camp, he took his team to a hotel outside of Los Angeles just to get all the young guys and get everybody used to what it was going to be like to go to the hotel on a road game so it wouldn't be a new experience coming here to Auburn. And then they came to Montgomery, and they came on Thursday night. So they've been here a little bit longer than you would normally go on a road trip to get acclimated here. And, uh, boy, they have been businesslike tonight. Well, they've taken a lot of the uh, alums. Sam Cunningham, you saw him here. Hal Bedsoll, a star of that 1962 team, had a chance to meet him yesterday. Fourth and five. 
And uh, number 14, Tom Malone going in on probation. Dave Robert, number 22. Fourth down. I believe we're going to have a delay. Yep. So they'll make them punt from the 38 yard line. Well, what happens now for Tommy Tuberville and the Auburn Tigers? I mean, they uh, came into this season with such tremendous expectations, particularly from their fans, and uh, and this is a good football team. They they're not going to fold and go away. They're going to be a good football team, but uh, they have to go on the road for the next game and play Georgia Tech. At the 10. Wow. Tom Malone. First he kicks a 70 yarder. Yeah. And now pinpoint accuracy knocks it out of bounds at the two yard line. 546 to go. Time now for the play of the game presented by Wrangler Five Star Premium Denim. And for the call of the play of the game. Here's USC radio broadcaster Pete Arbogast. Liner drops the pass quickly, looking, throws, back in the end zone, touchdown! Mike Williams starts off where he left off last year. The Trojans score, have the lead. And that is the Wrangler five-star play of the game. There is, by the way, a presence not here tonight. Jim Fife, for 22 years, the wonderful play-by-play -play broadcaster of the Auburn Tigers, passed away of a brain aneurysm at the very young age of 57 last May and Jim uh, honored at halftime ceremonies tonight there's Jim Fife his uh, widow Rose accepting an honor I knew him well and he was a terrific man 22 years as a voice of the Auburn Network and featured on the program today his signature call touchdown Auburn reverberated through the planes for those 22 years. 525 to go in this one. Here's Campbell. Throws it away right side. Well, Jim Fife uh, memorialized tonight. It's worth listening to some of his famous calls. There's the snap, the spot, kick is away, long enough, high enough, kick, good, it's good, it's good, it's good, it's good, it's good. The Tigers have defeated Alabama nine to nothing. See you later, Bama, I'm headed to Toomer's Corner. War Eagle, everybody. <laughs> well, here's Carnell Williams. There will not be a gathering at Toomer's Corner tonight. No. And uh, almost eerily strange that on uh, a game without him, that there would be no Auburn touchdown. 23 nothing right now, USC. For those of you who might be uh, unfamiliar, as you look at the last shutout at home back in 1998, one of the great traditions of college football uh, is the gathering at Tumor's Corner after an Auburn win. The intersection of uh, College and Magnolia Streets, Tumor's Drugstore, have been there forever. My wife. Tried some of their world famous lemonade <laughs> yesterday. And here's uh, the running game stuff. Yeah, if you were watching our tennis coverage earlier, you saw Jill Arrington's piece on Tumor's Drugstore. Well, they. The tradition is they go and they roll the place with toilet paper, cover all the trees at the intersection. 20,000 or so gather at this intersection. It will be quiet tonight. Well, that play right there was indicative of the way the game has gone for Auburn. It was third and one, late in the game, and not only do they not make the first down, they lose two yards. Penetration by the USC front four, knocks them back, and Auburn forced a punt. Fourth and two. Gibson. Sidewinder. That one is down by Montavis Pitts. 
And another reminder of the lineup tonight on CBS. Once the festivities are complete here, we'll begin with Hack and then Craig T. Nelson in the district. That's the lineup tonight on CBS. And our U.S. Open coverage will continue again tomorrow. Jason Campbell. Mom and Dad made the four-and-a-half-hour drive over here from Taylorsville, Mississippi this morning, hoping to watch their son lead the Tigers to victory and not to be tonight. He struggled, as did the rest of his uh, Auburn Tiger team. First down and 10. Nice run up the middle. Well, one of the tragedies that occurred this summer in college sports uh, affected the family of Southern California. 18-year-old Rian Rucker, an outstanding All-American high school linebacker, drowned in the surf off the California coast on July 21st, uh, dead at the age of 18. And uh, his teammates wearing a decal on their helmets, number 54, to honor him for the season. Big smile on Sam Cunningham's face in the middle of that group. And for more on Rucker, let's go now to Jill Arrington. That's right, Vern. On August 4th, a memorial service was held for Drianne at the service. His father, Andre, his mother, Adrian, they were all presented a number 54 jersey. You know, Coach Carroll said that he had such a wonderful spirit, a smile that lit up the room that he will certainly be missed on and off the field, Vern. All right, thank you, Jill. Third and one. Now you see the number 54 on the back of the helmet. That will be worn throughout the season. Norm Katnick over the ball. Toss right. Chauncey Washington, number 25, gets the carry. You know, before this game started, we showed you a couple of pairs of players that had to step up right for their team to win. For Auburn, it was their two tailbacks, Ronnie Brown and Carnell Williams. Well, tonight, together, 20 carries, only 67 yards. On the other side, it was the wide receivers for USC, Mike Williams, and Kerry Colbert. For them, 10 catches, not a lot of catches, but 115 yards and a touchdown. And, uh, and really, USC controlled the game with their defense by shutting down the Auburn run. Again, they'll control the clock. Lindale White up the middle as the uh, time remaining evolves to 135. Next Sunday, the NFL on CBS. Week one, San Diego, Kansas City, New England at Buffalo, Houston at Miami. The Browns at home against the Colts. Pittsburgh against Baltimore. Denver goes into Cincinnati and Jacksonville and Carolina. It all begins with the NFL today next Sunday at noon Eastern time. You know, Vern, we talked about the, uh, you had that graphic up about the deja vu from the 1969 season, the 2003 season. Could it be a championship year? As we look at another hard run for USC and one of the ironic little twists to add to that, we've had five national championship games in the BCS and six BCS major conferences. The only conference to not win a BCS championship so far is the Pac-10. There's been a representative from every other BCS conference win, Tennessee, Florida State, Oklahoma, Miami, and Ohio State last year. Could this be the year for the Pac-10? Little emotional celebration yeah. on the sideline. That's Ed Orgeron, the defensive line coach, who uh, is a fiery guy. Was actually with Tommy Tuberville on the Miami Hurricane staff. And in two weeks, we'll be back with South Carolina at Georgia. And here's another run. Hey, Ed Orgeron and Tommy uh, Tuberville were roommates as well as coaches together. Tommy had been. Uh, on Jimmy Johnson's staff and Pete Carroll let the celebration continue. This they have overwhelmed win. Auburn. A great, great win for USC. Ryan Colleen, number 16. That's the end of the ball game. Auburn, 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 
comes to the Plains for the first time and dominates. They knock off the Auburn Tigers 23 zip. Be right back. And time now for the Fidelity Investment Scoring Recap. First touchdown, first possession. Matt Leiner, Mike Williams, 7-0. And then a succession of field goals. Three to be exact, 28 yards away, 42. And then the final one made it 16 to nothing from 35 yards out. And late in the game, final touchdown following the third USC turnover recovery. Herschel Dennis from 14 yards away, 23 to nothing the final. Matt Leinert, our player of the game, 17 of 30, 189 yards. One touchdown, no interceptions. It all was about game management. Final score, 23 nothing as Southern California comes in and rips Auburn apart. For Jill Arrington, Todd Blackledge, Ivor Lundquist saying good night from Jordan Harris Stadium. We'll see you in two weeks between the hedges in Georgia. <laughs>